continue to receive from your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to continue on with the end-time model of mass evangelism. Now, we're going to talk about the current model that we're using. The current model of mass evangelism is a big crusade held in a large and expensive facility like a stadium. That's the current model that we are familiar with. The one who ministers healing is a specially anointed and gifted servant of the Lord from out of town. Now, in order to hold such a crusade in a large stadium, what is involved in it? Money. A lot or a little? A lot of money. Okay? And uh, so n not every one of us or, or a church can do it. It takes, you know, a few churches and lots mass of believers and everybody in the city to come together to do it which is wonderful, but because the amount of money involved is so large, and also the one who ministers is only one. When he's here, things happen, and when he's gone, things stop. And, well, the most famous evangelist uh, is Billy Graham. And even with Billy Graham, he said that the problem arises after everything is over with is the follow-up. So those that are added to the church after such a big crusade and such expensive event is only 2%. Now this is even a uh, 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 Billy Graham uh, uh, organization report. Very accurate, 2%. So where are all the others? They're gone. So in terms of discipleship, it's not very effective, right? And the Lord not calling us just to preach the gospel, but to disciple. So, in that sense, then, the Great Commission is not fulfilled because the Great Commission is preaching the gospel and disciple the nations. So, but it serves its purpose because it's like a big advertisement for the kingdom of God. But there's one problem. The believers just sit there and watch. And there's only one who ministers. And that's not really what the church is all about, isn't it? Because the church is supposed to minister together. It's a body ministry. And problems do arise from this. Some servants of the Lord, they know the word of the Lord. They walk humbly. They really planted their foot on you know, the ground. But some of them really got so out of uh, control. And you can see why. Because such a big mass of people, and you get adulation, you know, you're the only one, you're the only anointed servant of the Lord, so it gets out of hand. But anyway, the end time model of evangelism, that's what we are talking today. It's every believer being equipped, and every believer serves. Do you think by depending on just a few, a handful of famous evangelists, we can finish this great commission. No, it takes all of us, right, to do it. So they serve their purpose, but we also, as a church, has to be equipped and preach the gospel and disciple the nations. The end-time model, relatively small crusades in each local church or neighborhood venue. Smaller is better. <laughs> it's cell group uh, concept actually trained local believers heal the sick at the meeting to confirm the truth of the gospel to the lost and such local meetings can be held as often as desired isn't it true now for example tonight we're going to have the crusade right here how much does it cost you pastor to rent this place nothing right it's already here it's homegrown. And who is going to minister? All of us together. And let me tell you, if we only depend on our pastors to minister, poor pastor, they're going to short, short lived, you know? Their life will be shortened. We love our pastor, we want the, them to live long. <laughs> so let us go and do the works together. They, pastors,
pastors, evangelists, actually apostles, all those offices, they're supposed to equip us so that we can do the works of the Lord. And then you go and equip another. That's the way it goes. But the church somehow got stuck somewhere. We just become, you know, one pastor and everything the pastor. If pastor has 100 sheep, actually pastor become a, 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 a servant of 100 sheep. That's not supposed to be, right? A pastor, he's supposed to equip the sheep and the sheep go and bear another sheep. <laughs> right? Pastor is a shepherd. Shepherd give food to the sheep so the sheep can give birth to another sheep. That makes sense. Okay? So that's this model, the end time model. Actually, this is the biblical model. Now, follow up of new believers is more effective as it is done by the believing friend, family member, or associate who brings them to the crusade meeting. Friendship follow up. See, Pastor Jose, before tell us, go to your neighbor, call them, your friends, tell them to come here. When they come here, who minister to them? You. And when they got saved, who going to follow up? You. They do, they do not get lost. In such a big meeting, actually, when they got saved, they give you papers, right? So all different churches call. They really don't want to come, you know? Why? They don't know you. Strangers. But over here, if you take them here or you take them to your church, they know you. After a while, they're following you. They get used to it. They go there. And we know, right? Most of us got saved because of our friends, right? Or our acquaintance or our brothers or sisters, the people that we know in the family. So friendship follow up. And we know all this, but what, let's, let us do it. Let us do it. So actually, we were just talking that we need Christians to be in the marketplace. You know, not supposed to be all Christians to become, you know, full-time <clears throat> servants of the Lord. There's a special calling for that, but let me tell you, the pastor can only reach you, but you can reach the people outside the church. So engineers, doctors, models, actors, whatever. We need everyone in their different places, teachers, to influence people in the marketplace. Amen? Yeah. So in every level, we need Christian. So and, and that's the way it is. Then we can influence the society. But if we are only and close and isolate ourselves in the church, in the four walls of the church, really we cannot do anything. And in fact, because we were so scared to go out there to influence the world, we gather ourselves in the church all the time <laughs> such that there's no influence out there. Also applies in small groups or in one-on-one -on -one evangelism. Today, what you got is that you can do it one-on-one. -on -one. You can also do it in a small group. If you have cell group, you know, that's a very intimate setting. You can minister right there. Also in the workplace, if anyone you have been praying for for a long, long time and all of a sudden they got sick, what do you do? You have been trying to lead them to the Lord. What do you do? Pray over them. You know, minister to them. In the name of Jesus, be healed. See, that's the way to get them. The time has come. So you have this weapon. So it's a very useful weapon. I have given you a gun, actually. M16. Well, I, the Australian doesn't, look at, doesn't use M16, right? Huh? What is that? Australian made. We use M16. So... It, uh, in fact, what I'm giving you is that we're all training, being trained together as foot soldiers. We're not training you to be generals. You know, who are the generals? Benny Hinn, Reinhard Bonke, those are generals. The Lord appoint them, right? We're now foot soldiers <laughs> with M16. M16 is a powerful enough weapon. Can it kill enemies? Yes. yes. If everyone kill enemies, will we win the war? Yes. yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Now, will foot soldiers ever be promoted? Yes. yes, be faithful in what little you have. If you have faith as mustard seed, right? There you go. Use it. How the Apostle Paul proclaimed the gospel to the lost in an evangelistic meeting. 
Okay, now before we talk about Peter, now we talk about Paul. See if he used gifts of healing or he used uh, uh, authority base. First Corinthians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. But let's see, how did Apostle Paul proclaim the gospel? Nowadays, you hear the gospel being preached in a very, very complicated way sometimes, right? Until the one who hears it, what is he talking about? Sometimes the salvation message is not even there, right? Become positive thinking message, I don't know. Uh, you know, God bless me message, see? That kind of message. A prosperity message, all kinds. But here is what Paul said, And I, brothers, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Now, how did the Apostle Paul heal the sick? Acts chapter 28, verse 7. There was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and for three days entertained us hospitably. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. Authority based or what is this? authority and he did pray and then after prayer right it's like stop place his hands on him and healed him separate right didn't put it all together how did paul cast out demons acts chapter 16 verse 16 once when we were going to the place of prayer we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future she earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling and this girl followed paul and the rest of us shouting this men are servants of the most high god who are telling you the way to be saved demons are talking day after days should you be pleased if demon you know tell you about all the truth no you know what? People like to go to those um, fortune teller. Can they tell you, you know, truth, little truth? Yes. Should you listen to them? Bad luck. Real bad luck. Don't, don't even listen. Bad luck. There's no good luck. We only have blessing. And when the blessing of God come upon us, there's no worry with it. But let me tell you, go to those fortune tellers, I feel sorry for you. Bad luck. Demons follow you home. So what did Paul do to this girl? Uh, to these demons? <laughs> she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. No, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. <laughs> At that moment, the spirit left her. That's all. Simple, right? We're going to skip this one. Now, this is very important. I'm going to teach you how to do mass healing. What if one day the Lord make you so big, you'll have to preach to a thousand people or ten thousand people? Hallelujah. Some of you here will do it. Amen. Are you going to lay hands one on one by them? Then you need to be laid hand on, right? You can't do that, right? So you need to do mass healing, right? 10,000 people. What kind of principle is involved in here? Now, let's look at this. Luke chapter 7, verse 2. There, a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. 
So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. So don't come to my house. You just stand there, and you just give the word, and my servant will be healed. This is like mass healing, right? Uh, you stand here, the masses are over there, right? You can say the word, and they'll be healed. Except this is only one, okay? But let me teach you in a moment what is it involved in here. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. What is it? Say the word. Say the command. Command it, my servant will be healed. You see, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus' disciples never say that, right? And this centurion is a Roman centurion. And what did Jesus say? For I myself, oh, well, the centurion tried to explain why he understood this principle. He said, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. What is that? Authority. Remember, we said military men, they understand authority. There he goes. Did he understand the faith of God? When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. The only one he praised is this centurion. You know, he's not Israelite. He's a pagan. What do you call it? Not pagan. What do you, eh, huh? Heathen, there you go. <laughs> pagan heathen non-believer and well he he believed that jesus can heal see but he understood the principle jesus you have the authority over that realm god has given you that authority just say the word it shall be done just like me i have authority in my position see i have someone above me which is i'm under the, their authority but under me also soldiers i tell this one come this one come this one go this one go do this do this see so Jesus said, hey, you understand this principle. All my disciples, I have to taught them after three years. They still didn't understand it, right? <laughs> now, then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Praise the Lord. Now, what do we learn from this? So healing, the authority of healing doesn't depend on distance, right? Now, if you're in Sydney and your relatives are sick in Perth, what can you do? Do you have to fly to Perth if you, you know, cannot have the money or time to fly to Perth? What do you do? Pick up your cell phone or type it in the email. Same thing. It will work. Okay? You can do that. So authority is not influenced by distance. Now, in military, if a general gives a command to one soldier, okay, we know he has the authority over one soldier. If he gives order to two soldiers, will his authority be divided in two? No. How a hundred? Is it remain the same, his authority? Yes. So authority is not influenced by numbers. Amen? So that is the principle behind mass healing. When you stand here, you minister healing, you say, in the name of Jesus, if you cannot lay hands, okay? All you sickness, this and that, this and that, be gone in Jesus' name. All the sickness and demons that is under your authority, at that time, they obey. So it being 100,000, can be 2 million, that's what Reinhard Bunk can do usually, right? He cannot lay hands on, you know, a million people. <laughs> so he said, in the name of Jesus, be healed, you know? be set free. That's the principle of mass healing. So now you can do it too. Hallelujah. Pray to the Lord that you have that opportunity. Amen. So if you cannot do it in Sydney, go to Africa. <laughs> go to Papua New Guinea or somewhere. Oh, in Africa, people come, you know. There were so many sick people over there as you stand. 
I'm being sent. Well, actually, that's what my husband do. I'm sent by God of heaven here to proclaim his kingdom. So to tell you that his kingdom is here, whoever is sick here, he will heal them. Now, who is sick? Raise their hands. Many people, you know, raise their hands. So now if you want to be healed, come over here. Instantly, he has a crowd. Hallelujah. See, that's what you do. So go to those places and you see things happen and your faith go up that way. <laughs> and then you can come back here and minister with more faith. <laughs> and then if you need to recharge, you go back out there again. <laughs> Broader authority in the context of preaching the gospel. You do have broader authority other than just casting out demons and healing the sick. You do. Acts chapter 13 verse 6. And when they had gone through the whole island unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, a man of understanding. The same called unto him Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. So Paul was preaching gospel to Sergius Paulus, who is a very influential man. And there was a witch doctors there that tried to obstruct what Paul is doing. But Elimas the sorcerer, so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn aside the proconsul from the faith. So what do you think Paul do? Go and pray. And Lord, please, Bless this witch doctor so that he can get saved and don't bother me. <laughs> well, we were taught, right? If you, if you get slapped one side, you know, offer the other side to be slapped. Well, I guess Paul, uh, what do you call it, backslided. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. You are going to be blind. And for a time, you will be unable to see the light of the sun. That's why I say Paul backslided here. He cursed him. You go blind. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. It happened. God backed him up. So we'll see if Paul is really backslided or he really practiced broader authority, right? What would you do? See? We weren't taught this way. We weren't taught this way. But it's called for at times. I was just hearing Pastor Tim and his wife with teeth, you know, people tried to rob his dad and the, the guy said, you know, give me your money. And his dad said, well, just go away, you know. You don't know what will happen to you. No, give me your money. And then he said again, this is an old man, you know. Just go away. You don't know what will happen to you. And the guy kept on saying, well, what are you talking about? You're an old man, you know. And indeed, they want to stab him. And then Pastor Tim's father said, in the name of Jesus, be frozen. Is that what it is? Be frozen. So this guy stood there and could not move, holding his knife or his gun or whatever right there and so he screamed and the security man came and everything the police came trying to you know pull him away they could not unlock him <laughs> they couldn't even take his weapon away from him so they said oh please do something so that we can take him away so his father said again in the name of jesus unfrozen <laughs> and the guy just limped down and drop down you know so they took him away you see that's the authority that we have amen, amen. praise the lord i think i heard another story well, what was the story again we have so many stories <laughs> so when it's time for you and what was paul doing was this enemy personal enemy of paul is it but Jesus, this guy, is he a personal enemy of Paul? No. Who? God. He's the enemy of the kingdom of God. Now, when Paul did this, what happened actually? 
Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Apparently, he got a rhema, right? The Holy Spirit tell him something. This guy, remove him from the scene. Okay? So, and apparently, the Holy Spirit also revealed to Paul that you are the child of the devil, you Elibus. So, the child of the devil is like Judas. This guy's name is never written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Remove him. Amen. You know, sometimes maybe we have to do that, you know, like, Osama bin Laden, you know, you die in Jesus' name. Do not kill so many people. You see? You pray for his salvation? I don't know. There's come to a point that you have to... Dis Are you but I hope you don't go out there and somebody cut you off, you say you die in Jesus' name. <laughs> or you go to the office, somebody that, you know, hate you because you are a Christian, you die in Jesus' name. Don't do that. No, 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 no. This is, you know, the enemy of the kingdom of God, the enemy of the gospel. And the Lord will tell you sometimes, this is what you do. Then speak it forth. Okay, but don't lightly do all kinds of things, all right? I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> like, okay, one time, Pastor William was in North India. He was preaching already to the fourth day and 10,000 people in the field. But by the fourth night, people already gathered in the wind and the storm came, the lightning, until the whole stage was almost blown off. But it wasn't a season for that kind of wind or storm. It was already four nights. One more night, the fifth night. So this is the fourth night. And so the uh, MC told Pastor William, he said, Brother William, uh, why don't we finish singing one hymn and then tell them to go home instead of the rain, you know? <laughs> I kind of scatter them. That doesn't look good. I already run all over the place. 10,000 people now gathered. So somehow Pastor William thought to himself, I've been here for four nights, people getting safe, getting healed. Why this thing has to come? It must be from the enemy, two plus two, you know, equal four, you know? And he didn't even have the rhema or anything. He just put it together in his head. Like, this is not supposed to be. So after the sing singing finished, he said, we're not going to go. So he took the microphone. He asked everyone, the whole assembly, let us pray for the Lord to send away this wind and this storm and this lightning. You think that is risky? Yeah, what if after you say, in the name of Jesus, amen, the rain came, the storm came, right? Oh, very risky. But, you know, after he finished praying, you think what else uh, did he do? Rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, I commend you, you power and principality of this place, be removed. This storm and this cloud be removed in the name of Jesus. And you know what happened? The storm and the clouds split in two. Go to the north and go to the south. And where they met, remain dry. And then until the end of the service, it's just drizzle like a fresh, you know, rain from the Lord. And it gives so much glory to the Lord. And that night, they were able to renounce the principality of the area. And the whole 10,000 people, this is a town, uh, uh, a community, repented. You see, they invited the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Amen? Praise the Lord. See, you are given that authority. Now, I'm going to add this note. Do not go by yourself and rebuke the power and the principality up there. It's not in your place. Because you can be hurt so badly. You know, uh, the one that we have power and authority over are the snakes and scorpions, right? So don't rebuke those power and principality unless the whole church, all the churches gather together. It happens that that night the whole community was there. Okay, that's a different situation, but we don't take those things lightly. We don't usually leave them alone. Even in the book of uh, Peter, I think First Peter somewhere, it says, do not call them names. Even Gabriel do not call them names. Okay, so don't say slew foot, Satan, this and that, this and that. No, don't do that. It's not in your place. Okay, so, but if you meet sickness or demons uh, that are bothering people, just cast them out. That's good. That's in your authority. But the power and principalities in the air, they're a big thing. Actually, it's Gabriel and uh, uh, the other angels, right? Fight them. 
Mm -hmm. Not you. You take care of this part. <laughs> okay? That's so. That's you have broader authority. You know what? Another thing that you can also think about money. Don't let money become your boss. What is money? The Lord said. The Lord actually put money very important. He, he compared it to himself. He said, you can, only serve, you can only serve either me or mammon, right? That means mammon and God can be in competition, right? So, let your money be your servant. Do not let money order you around, but you order them around. Now, how... What kind of wisdom do you need for that? I think each one of us find out from the Lord. Lord, give me the wisdom. How to make money my servant and not my boss. But you are my boss. Amen? So that's another thing. Oh. That was very important. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed. See, that miracles did something good, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. The teaching wasn't even just word, right? It was accompanied by signs and wonders that sorcerer became blind. That really get him very fast, and he believed. Now, the operation of the gift of healing is different from the exercise of authority. Amen? Operating in the gift of healing may require very little effort. Why? Who is doing all the word, work? Yeah, God did. The Holy Spirit did. All you need to do is just say, Lord, please heal them. And they got healed. Have you seen it? Yeah. Amen? That's the operating of the gift. And remember when, uh, here is what happened. Acts chapter 5 verse 15. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mad so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. What is that? Gifts or authority? Gifts. He just passed by, they all got healed. Now some people just sing, people get healed. Some people just say, praise the Lord, they get healed. You, you see? That's the operating of the gifts. Amen. So, gifts can be very, very powerful. So praise God if you have gifts. Now if you don't have it, what do you do? Authority, command. Amen. I don't know if I have a um, gifting in that manner, but we I use more often use the authority more because that's what I understand. For the longest time I do not understand what anointing means, you know. I equate anointing with, you know, feeling spooky or feeling my hair racing up in here, you know. Because we could talk about anointing, I was just, huh? Anointing of the Lord, what's that, you know? I didn't understand it. But anointing is like appointment from the Holy Spirit upon you to do something. You see? So, but I think in charismatic church, we rely on so much of that feeling the anointing. And then, I don't think you, you, you know even yourself, you know, talking about all this, I'm feeling the anointing, you say, what? So, I have this anointing, what should I do? You don't even know what to do. But now, you, do, you, do you know what to do? <laughs> if you feel that anointing real quick, you know, in the name of Jesus, get out. Whoa, they all run. The enemies. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, this is the Spirit of the Lord come upon me, anointing me to preach the good news. You see? There's a purpose for that anointing, not just anointing feeling the goosebumps. Right? So there's a purpose to it. When you're anointed, you preach the good news and you set the captives free. Make the lame walk, the blind see. See? All that thing. By the way, I think yesterday somebody asked me, can you cast out the spirit of, oh, does Jesus heal depression? Yes, he does. He carried our sorrows. Right? He healed our disease and carried our sorrows. Now, what is sorrows? Depression, right? Yeah, that's it. So do it just like that. You know, it's the spirit of depression be gone or depression be gone or chemical imbalance. Be balanced now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen? By the way, if you don't want to get depressed, be happy every day. <laughs> Life is too short. But, but I do recognize people do get through that chemical imbalance, you know. Then you can take some medicine, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But anyway, really a happy heart make you healthy. A sad heart make your bone dry. So I have decided 
I'm not going to be unhappy. Why should I? I'm not going to worry. Why should I? It's decision right here. And when you decide that, your life change. You know, sometimes we sit there, oh, how stupid. How stupid I am. Oh, how bad. Oh, how... Oh, if you do that, I tell you, you get depressed so quick. Don't do that. Just confess your sins. If you're stupid, say, Lord, I'm stupid. <laughs> Please give me wisdom and finish. That's all. Don't even go back. You cannot do anything for yesterday. You feel guilty over yesterday if you think about it. And you cannot do anything, you know, in the future. You worry about the future. Why? You only live right now, today. The next breath you breathe, you will live. The next breath you don't breathe, you're gone. So, be happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm preaching and has nothing to do with all this. <laughs> Why did I go there? <laughs> uh, huh? Somebody need it? I see, I'm moving in my gifting. You know my gifting? <laughs> you know my gifting? I know my gifting. I'm an encourager. I encourage people. Is this such a gifting in the Bible? Yeah. Okay, I, did. I better read my Bible better. <sighs> <laughs> motivational, then I should be given more money, right? <laughs> Crowds gathered. Oh, here is how powerful the gifting is. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. That's the movement of the gift of healing because God is healing. So all of them were healed. Hallelujah. I pray that tonight we have the gift of healing in, in operation. But in case the gift of healing is not in operation. <laughs> now pull out your other gun and keep on shooting and keep on shooting and keep on shooting. In the name of Jesus, be gone. I think they'll be so scared though. Well, the Christians are really knowing their authority. Now we better run. Let me tell you, every time you say, in the name of Jesus, with that faith, you know, those demons, those sickness, whatever, in the, in, in the body of the people, they feel that pain, you know, like being punched. You know? That's why Jesus, when he walked into the synagogue, he was preaching, and that man was shouting, Jesus of Nazareth, what do we have to do with you? Why do you have come here to torment us? Our time has not come, you see? Why did they scream like Because they felt tormented. They feel that pain. They feel that judgment upon them. So when you say, in the name of Jesus, I think they're already shaking in the boots. You know? like, Be gone, and all of us go at them together. Oh, my goodness. We terrorize them. <laughs> the terrorists can only be terrorized by another terrorist. And we're kingdom terrorists. <laughs> terrorize sickness and demons. Hallelujah. Oh, we're good soldier. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We terrorize the devil. Hallelujah. So, people, now, you face demons and disease like that. But demons and disease, actually, their root is what? Sin. So, how is your attitude towards sin? The same. In fact, that's what the Bible taught. Deal with them violently. He said, if you sin, you know, this caused you to sin. He said, your hand caused you to sin, cut it off. He said, if your eyes cause you to sin, gouge it out. Whoa. Then we have all maimed Christians. <laughs> but no, what he said is that this is a so terrible. You really have to deal with it. You put them to death. In the same way. But it, it shall be taught later. I'll tell you, one thing about... Uh, the word of the Lord is so balanced. If we read the whole counsel of God, we will not be led astray. Amen? Okay. Now, we, we have been talking about ministry to the non-believer. How about us, you know, Christians? What do we do with the Christians? I tell you, I don't like to minister to Christians. They are so hard to be healed. They have so much problem. They're so complicated. It's easier to minister to the non-believer. <laughs> You don't guys don't get it. We're so complicated. You know what? You minister to Christian hours and hours and hours. 
oh, like an old goat, you know. <laughs> See, I've been pastors for a long time, so I know. But God has delivered us. <laughs> so, have mercy on my brother right there. <laughs> but anyway, so we are being taught right now. So let's serve the Lord together. We love one another. Let's give each other, you know, the best, right? So we all can look good, look healthy, and not gnaw at each other, make each other sick. Ministry to believers in the context of the body of Christ. James 5.14, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Pray over in the whole Bible. This is the only place it says pray over. Pray over in the Greek, even different from pray for one another. Pray over. Now, I'll explain that. The Greek word epi, pray over, is a preposition that is almost always found to describe the relative physical position between two objects. Upon, on, at, by, before, opposition, over, against, to, over, across. What, what does that remind you? Praying over. Authority, right? Praying against. Authority again, praying on, the relative position is that you on top and the other one below you. Position of what? Authority. And the prayer of faith, this is continue on, pray over them and anoint them with oil. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. What kind of prayer is that? Pray of the faith of God or what? Right? Pray of the faith of God, right? Believing that they shall raise up. No doubt, right? That's the one right there. But actually, over here it says pray. But I think it shouldn't be so different than commanding. I think it's interchangeably used. Why should it be so different? This is the brother of Jesus. James actually is the brother of Jesus. He followed Jesus all these years. Why should he practice different, you know, practice it should be the same but he used pray over now how do i know that this is different from the other pray for look at this and is and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven confess your trespasses to one another for christian before you being healed confess your sin one to another amen if your brother sin against you seven times forgive him what if 70 times forgive him and the disciples scream, increase our faith. <laughs> and pray for one another that you may be healed. See, pray for. That's a intercession. Pray for one another to the Lord. Okay? So it is different. Pray over and pray for. Now, so before we always pray for one another, we do everything else, pray for them uh, before the Lord, uh, pray to the Lord for them, but we never pray over them, right? So now, don't stop just pray for one another, pray over them. That is anointing them in the oil, elders, in the name of Jesus, be healed. That's when things get, get done. And Christian, please do not hate each other, you know? I tell you, it's not just you. You know, I have problem because I'm still alive. If I'm dead, I have no problem. <laughs> and, and you know what? Who is the problem? Sometimes it's not outsider. It's people inside your house. Your in-laws, you know, it can be your outlaw now. <laughs> you don't deal with it the right way. So people that you deal with closely every day can become your problem. <laughs> So what do you do? Let me tell you, you pray, you fast, you ask the Lord. And it might be a daily battle, but you will win it, but don't give up, you know. Because we are being trained by the Lord to love one another. And uh, I think I'll preach on that tomorrow. About one service will be, uh, be anxious is not the will of God, and the other service will be on... You can have all this faith you want. If you do not have love, you're a crazy gong. I 
I think it's important. We better remind ourselves for, for that. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Confess to one another your sins. So please do not give your pastor a lot of problem. Love him. <laughs> he is watching after your soul. I don't know why I like to say that because I've been a pastor for the longest time. And I understand. Okay, we're done. In fact, that word for is really hooper, see? Different word. Okay? So don't just pray. Give the command. Now, some sickness can be caused by spirits. Not all sickness caused by spirits, okay? Some sickness. And in the Bible, Jesus did say, you know, some sickness crippled by a spirit for 18 years. I'm just going to, blindness can be caused by spirit. Deafness can be caused by spirit. Muteness can be caused by demons, all right? So sometimes if you don't know, you just cast all of them out. If you do know, then you have discernment of the spirit, which is another gift of this Holy Spirit, okay? If you don't, just cover your ground, cast them all out. I don't know sometimes, but let me tell you, if you try to pray for somebody, you, you try to minister to, for somebody, you command this thing, pain be gone, and the pain move. And run here and run over there or become more intense. What do you think it is? Demons, yeah. Then you bind it. Not, but just, not just bind it. Don't, don't just bind it. Just say, cast it out. Don't bind it. Cast it out. Is there any binding in a demon in the Bible? I mean, other than, you know, in, in ministering to, uh, to people, casting out demons, did Jesus ever say, I bind you, demon? No. Get out, right? In Jesus' name. So let us follow the way the Lord did it. Don't be smart uh, by yourself. So he rebuked the evil spirit. Just rebuke it. Don't talk to evil spirit. Some people say, what's your name? Well, Jesus did ask one time, what's your name? But then they carry on conversation with the demons. Don't talk to demons. You don't need to. Just tell them to get out. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. That's good. Never enter him again. Don't come back. Okay. Now, this is what we have to really stand on. Some people said, now, can I be harmed by demons that is coming out, you know? He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. Stand on that. And by the way, snakes and scorpions, they crawl on the ground, right? They're not the flying things, right? So these are demons and disease that are bothering human beings. They're not the ones that are flying on the air. You know, those are big, big guys. <laughs> That's not our realm to touch it. Not that part. This is concerning snakes and scorpions. Now, why do infirmities sometimes return? It's their nature. Sin is like that. Demons is like that. Sickness is like that. They like to return. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. So sometimes after you cast these demons out, you ask them, you want to believe in the Lord and repent? If they say no, tell them seven more terrible spirits will come upon you. <laughs> Scare the hell out of them. You see, indeed, it's true. Make sure, okay? And uh, now, for us believers, and if this thing come again, what do you do? Cast them out. Every time they come, they knock at the door, you slap them. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist them. And actually, before that, it's even more important, obey. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he shall free from you. That's, that's important. Later, Jesus said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Right there. See, sin is so terrible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. If your right eye causes you to sin, 
gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. That's how you deal with your sin. That's how I deal with my sin. Do not give it some room or well because that guy is so terrible. Oh, this mother-in-law of mine is so terrible. Her tongue is so sharp. I can't stand it. That's why I'm so mad. I hate her. Why did I say that? I guess I experienced it myself. <laughs> Don't tell my husband that. But anyway, you know, we all have that kind of stuff in us. You know that? But what if you, you, you try to entertain it, come here and sit down and talk to me? Uh-oh. No, you gouge it out, you throw it away, you don't give it room. Hey, I shouldn't do that. In the name of Jesus, be gone. Don't entertain it. That is sinful, that is so bad, it can take me to hell. Be gone. Don't take that hate. See, for if you live... Oh, no. Where is that? Romans 8, 13, for if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Amen? Amen. So that's how you deal with sin and sickness and devil. By the way, the devil can only come back, sickness can only come back if you give them room. Usually we sin. You know what, for Christian actually, the number one problem is, you know, our sin. Might not be sin trying to kill people, but it's that bitterness in us, the root of bitterness. You know what that root should be done with? Remember that mulberry tree? Be uprooted and thrown into the ocean. Cannot be seen anymore. <laughs> That's how you deal with it. Okay, now we come to the last part, and this is the most important part. Finally, keeping the proper balance. Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. What does that mean? That means we shouldn't cast out demons, we shouldn't heal the sick. Is that what it means? No, but you should not. This is what it means. You should not think a Christian is a good Christian by how much miracles can they do or how big a miracles can they do. That's not the trademark of a good Christian is. What should be a trademark of a good Christian? Fruits, his character. What is that? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, all that. But the fruit of the Spirit. Let us read this, right? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So we shouldn't be so crazy about miracles and this and that, and we forget the fruit. Oh, I can cast out demons now. Oh, I can heal people. I can raise people from the dead. Let me tell you, if people come to you and you really actually, you know, stuck your nose to them, you know, who are you? You know, I'm the man of God. I'm the woman of God. You know, don't talk to me. Don't teach me. Don't this. Uh-oh. I have to go out and stay in a $50,000 hotel if you don't give me this, give me that first class airplane seats. I'm not coming to your church to minister. Your church has to give me $10,000 for one night ministry. I didn't say that. <laughs> no, there it is. Freely receive, freely give. And this is the fruit of the Spirit. By their fruit, you recognize them. 
Amen. Hallelujah. That will keep us safe. After all, when you get to heaven, no miracles. You don't need miracles. I mean, you know, everybody is healed. No more sickness, no more tears. We're all well. What do we need in heaven here? Love, joy, peace, all that. Hallelujah. Let us remind one another. So be good to one another. You know, really, it's the, the attitude that you, you, you give to people, your face, the way you talk. And without love, whatever you say is a sounding gong, annoying. Get out of here. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, it's about something else that can go another place, you know. But really, this is the proper balance. Now, this is the test now, okay? If you can choose only one, the power of the Holy Spirit or the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you can only choose one. Which one would you choose? Good. You passed the test, 100, that one. I'm going to give you a diploma, right, after this. <laughs> Elijah challenges. <laughs> uh, now, listen to this one. If you can only choose one, faith in God or faith of God. Now, think about this. Don't just answer me, okay? You can only choose one. By the way, the power of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to choose just one. You can have both of them, okay? But all of you can have both of them, but in case you can only have one, faith in God or faith of God. What I mean is that faith in God is that you pray, you worship, you have that sweet relationship with the Lord. Faith of God is that the, the kind that you use you know, to cast out demons and to heal the sick. You can only have one of them. Which one would you rather have? Oh, yeah, well, oh, you got, you really good students. <laughs> oh, I'm a good teacher. <laughs> I mean, how do you like every day, 724, casting out demons? Ooh, ugly, right? But you would rather sit before the Lord and just praise Him and worship and pray, amen? <laughs> but you can have both. Hallelujah, the Lord did tell you to do both, right? But you know which one is more important. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They're so happy. All the demons, really, we cast them out. We kick their butt. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the Great Commission, now you go. So tonight, come. <laughs> come, and, and that's it. Praise the Lord. We are done. Praise God. Actually, it's 2.50. No more time for question and answer. <laughs> I think I want to go home. <laughs> you know what? We arrive on Thursday, so my time now is what? Saturday. So I haven't turned around yet. It's like 15 hours out of whack here. So I'm really sleepy. If I don't sleep this afternoon tonight, I don't know what I'm going to preach. <laughs> I was telling Pastor Ben, well, the teaching is that you all can carry on by yourself. I don't need to come. He said, no, you cannot because the pictures is you. How can it turn to another with beards? <laughs> Well, anyway, so the Lord bless you all, and we will ask Pastor Ben to pray for us. Thank you. Indeed, I think she has been a very good teacher teaching us, a very practical way. Come on, just please thank her again. But I should remind you, this is not the end, because this is only the first half of the seminar. Uh, that's only the theory and theory is nothing without practice so I'm looking forward to tonight and I hope you are too <laughs> and not only tonight or because normally what would happen is the second night would be better because they would be telling everyone there's healing here there's healing so come it really works you know there are th healings being, being being done so a lot more people will come so I think the 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 most uh, uh, you know uh, I think it's going to be a bomb. The Sunday night is going to be a big explosion and a lot more people are going to get healed because their faith are so pumped up and so, you know, it's grown. So I'd like to really, really um, 
uh, encourage you to come uh, tonight uh, and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You know, before you come, just get with God, right? And, you know, your names are in heaven, written in heaven. You are military people, actually. So before you come, put on your military clothes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Put on your armor. Yeah, put on your stripes. Huh? Yeah? Some of you are still foot soldiers. Some of you are captains. Some of you may be generals already. Come on, let's fight together. Let's stand up and fight together. This is not time anymore to get ministered, but it's time to minister. Yeah? It's time to give. So, be with God, get with God, be charged up really full until you want to explode. Put on your military clothes and let's just zap them. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, let's, let us just be the people that God wants us to be. Uh, his, his channel, His vessel, all for the glory of God. Not for our glory, but let the world see that Jesus is alive. Right? The syllabus of the teaching that you have um, been given all the past two days, it's all, we've, we've printed them out, and it's about, I think, 22 pages. You can, we've only got 50 of them uh, printed out, so you can buy them uh, as you go out. Esther, Esther, can you stand up, Esther? Esther, yeah, this beautiful girl. Yeah, she's going to be holding the, and you can buy from her, uh, only for $2 each. Um, and also, if she's going to have forms. If you want to order DVD, CD, and cassettes, you can order from her. Give your details, and then we will contact you. Right? And what else? Uh, that's it. it and the, the, can the canteen will be open again tonight. Uh, if you want to have some food before you, for, before you go. But most importantly, let's, let's, let's gather, you know, gather our thoughts and be with God and let God work through us. And let's see the power of God being manifested and the, the authority that God has given to us. Come on, let's practice it together. Because it's real. It's real, brothers and sisters. Come on, let's stand up together. Tonight, when I ask you to come forward here to minister with me together, let the man stand on this side, the woman stand on that side. And woman minister to woman, man minister to man. Yeah, that's very clear. So let's do everything in order. And if some people want to fall, you know, hang on to them. <laughs> Don't let them fall, okay? Unless it's really the Lord, then you can do anything. But uh, that's the protocol tonight. And all glory be to the Lord. Yes. Because um, we've been uh, distributing flyers around this area. So this area is actually our guinea pig, right? <laughs> but... Um, it's, it's a big Muslim area in this, in this place, but, and, and we've got inquiries uh, from Muslim people, right? Uh, they're they're going to come. They don't care. Uh, they just want to be healed. So we must, we must be um, sensitive to, to their culture. So men with men, women with women. That's what, that's what they want because they're, they're not used to any other thing. So um, let's, let's just pray to God that, you know, they'll get saved. <laughs> let's lift up our hands. Father, here we are, oh God. Use us as your vessels, Lord. Show your glory. Show your glory, oh Lord. Here we are. Send us. Here we are. Use us. Let your name be praised, Father. And bless all these people who have been hungry and thirsty for you and to glorify your name. Father, tonight we want to put on our military clothes that you have given to us, the stripes that you have given us, the weapons that you have given, given to us, the authority that you have given to us. Father, it's enough theory. We want to practice it, Lord. Train us, oh God. Here we are. Let us, Father, teach us and train us to become great warriors for your kingdom that we can establish with you the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Let us be mighty warriors and skillful warriors, Lord, that can shoot arrows with left and right, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we can use M16s and Glocks and whatever, Lord. Hallelujah. Desert Eagles, Lord, whatever. Father, here we are, use us. All for your glory. To you be the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say, yes! Hallelujah. Be early.